or the no? I just heard my name. I You're a visitor. Is she in oh, official capacity? Okay. Whatever you want to say. <laughs> Yeah, it was yesterday. Did it not get to you? 
No. So, um, but I still want her to approve it. I don't want to just do that outside of her seeing it. So, um, I'll send her an email tomorrow. And on that note, I did try to copy for you because it was on that email that you had sent me looking for the wages. Um, and I'm sorry to you, but I did my custom. I looked at 20, 18 numbers and then thought my math was all okay. the, the 2019 numbers. We had reduced hours and changed the leads. So I freaked out that our agent was just calling. That's okay. You called it. You called it. So. That's not a question. Mm -hmm. that, not a that, question. In fact, it should be a statement, statement that you are not <laughs> taking time off. That's what yes. I put it on there. Yes, we had. I thought I we thought had we had put it on there. I don't recall. I don't know if it was on the description, but that's fine. It, it was not on the job description she handed out, and but it could I, be in the offer letter. Right? Yeah, and I think it should be in the offer Absolutely. letter, also to the counselors, like to everybody. I because, think it should be everybody, uh, or unless you've budgeted for extra counselors to compensate for the fact that other people. Going away, but just know that they're you know potentially going away in the same week, and don't put yourself in a pickle again. And that's what I was trying to avoid. It's like saying at least the camp directors for Teen Camp and Camp Raleigh, they must be available yes. all eight weeks. Yes. And I'm not sure that's in the job description, so it needs to be part of some other process. It would be a part of the, the whole job offering. I yeah, that's something that could be discussed verbally as well too. That that could be an interview. Just be like. We expect our director and assistant director not to take any time off. So I think it's smart to have it in the job description, though, because then you're leaving out people that might have a vacation plan. Yeah. <laughs> but it's going to hold up your. Yeah, let's not. 
You, you have approved job descriptions. I okay. said, so they're, okay. We may, next you know, time we review the job descriptions and update them, we so add it at that point. You know, not, not, maybe, but, maybe create a Google Doc, like now, you know, lessons learned to consider for 2020, mm -hmm. and you put that on there so that, you know, when you start a new season, you can be reading all over all these things that you might want to think about for next time. And I actually, uh, I already received a question from a counselor that was here last summer. Um, Kelly, I'm interested in coming back this summer. Do I have to fill out another application? So I said I would ask that question tonight. My assumption would be no, but I don't want to make um, assumptions. I would think we would want it. I would think we would want it. Because then you'd it. have all that paperwork for this year as a bundle. Do you know what I mean? So that you don't have to go, I don't, I don't think you did it last year. It doesn't so matter, matter to me as long as I get it. I would want an updated W-4 form from them. Um, you know, maybe there's a separate form for tell us what's new about you since last year because we we know that, you know, whatever isn't this, you know, whatever is the same is the same. I'd be more concerned about are they expecting to make the same wage and have you budgeted for that? Did you say returning counselor? Yes. Okay. But did you budget decreases or do, are you budgeting the same rate? Same. What happens if they're applying, applying for a different position? A counselor might want to go for an assistant uh, assistant director or a director position. Mm -hmm. I mean, so he, he wasn't. But, and <laughs> so I was just, because I don't think we made them do a, a new one from the, our first year. Well, to the second you, year. then I think you should definitely do it again if you haven't done it from last year. And you, my other thought is about criminal background check. What was their last criminal background check that if they are doing a complete packet still then under you, 18. you might want so to do another a criminal background check. I don't know okay. how often we need to get the person. Yeah, those aren't those aren't very often, are they? It's really interesting because if somebody stays employed, you wouldn't really you wouldn't do it again. But since they've let, even though people do whatever they do in their off hours. <laughs> you, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't do it again, but since right. they're coming back, they're new employees. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, given most of them are under eighteen, I mm -hmm. wouldn't you know it wouldn't cost any money to do anybody over under eighteen, and we would just pass them through the police chief for a local check, and just worry that about makes sense. anybody who's over eighteen, which is forty seven dollars. Do we have that in our budget? The background. Um, okay. So, before we move on, because I ran into this in another group, I want it to be clearly reflected in the minutes that we're going to ask any returning counselors to do job applications. Do, should we vote on that, or should we just, as like an action plan, or does it just need to be stated in the minutes? If it's really important to you for whatever reason, or it seems like in future it might be really important to make clear that something was not just somebody's idea that they carried on with, but was indeed the consensus of the board, then it's best to make that a vote. You can make really concise minutes, but the minute, to, you know, a vote ensures that it's not that the minute takers interpretation is not that one person had an idea and carried on with it and put it in minutes but instead it was really a vote it just it just sort of formalizes it but you know it depends you know if everybody's on the same page one would always hope that everybody's on the same page but when you 
float an idea and discuss it and people sort of seem in agreement, it's enough to say everybody was agreed that we should do X, Y, Z and put that in the minutes. Um, but if it's a contentious conversation or if it's not really clear that we are actually agreeing to move forward in that manner, then that would make a vote more necessary so that it is clearer in the minutes. I hope that's clearer than mud. Yes. <laughs> so my question to us as a group, do we want to vote to say this is going to be our policy that we, that returning counselors must redo applications or do we just want to keep it as a practice and not like a policy? Because if we want it as a policy, we should vote on it. If we want it to make it a practice because we're all in agreement, then we don't need to vote. I don't think it hurts to do it as a policy because if, if we did in fact have our own policy and procedures manual, that would be in there. So a policies manual is a really good idea. Mm -hmm. I encourage you all someday when you get around to it to <laughs> draft it but caution with using the idea of enacting a, a, a policy because I'm not sure that you have the authority to do that. You, you should, you know, that being said, the idea of it is still good and carry on, but um, um, you should know what you're doing and have it in writing that you're abiding by whatever rules, at least for this season, but to make them more formal would be better, which I think would probably be so I will make a motion tonight that all returning counselors need to do an application for the upcoming season. And I would need a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Nays. Uh, I, I think I'm going to nay that. <laughs> just because. Yes, just because. <coughs> Once we so once we do well, have yeah, this is not my meeting. Yeah, but, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but <laughs> but I, I saw a vote with only two people voting and just seemed to disagree. So I don't know how the rest of you voted, oh, but I it didn't look like it. Yeah, I saw it. Did you? Oh, I'm sorry, I totally didn't hear you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, I have the uh, the plague is congested. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, there was four four days, okay. one day. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> so the third part of staffing is so once we have the approved and edited, everything's fine, salaries change, all that is ready to go. We need to figure out where Nate needs to get posted. Oh yeah, and I asked so, Caroline that question today and she said basically we are free to post and advertise as long as it doesn't cost us any money. So anything that is an extra cost would need approval. Okay. And I, and I believe, Caroline, we've had this conversation, you would be happy to post on Indeed, right? Is that, is that the name of it? I could put it on Indeed. Okay. Um, it can certainly go out through the town email list. Um, social media is free. Craigslist, I think, costs $25, just as a, as a point of information. Um, whatever you can think to do for free is free. Yep. Um, if it's not free, then um, yeah, you need to know. Yeah. You need to like vote that you're spending the money in that way, and I hope it's budgeted. Right. And mm -hmm. otherwise, you need board permit. Yeah. 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 We didn't do that, so thought that would be my question. You can put flyers and you know ask that like the high school, both high schools, any number of high schools to get the word out. Put flyers. And, so I don't okay. Know, do flyers and backpacks and, and, in high school, but and so <laughs> can I have you back up? Is it going on? Indeed, or not? Yeah. Going up on your own? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, you want all three of them? And then we're going to do it UNH, right? That's going over to UNH, like which is what we're kind of really crossing our fingers about. Mm -hmm. Do you want all three job descriptions on Indeed? Or am I just doing counselors, or, or all three of them? All three. <coughs> um, New Hampshire works on so much work. Are, is there a fee to that? Um, I don't believe so, but it's more complicated because you need an account, and I've had trouble setting up an account in the past. You need to know a username and password, and 
Um, I can look into it and figure out what my problem with it was and see if I can get by it. Um, and I can tell all of you, I got a notice from Summers. I'm on the Summers of Recreation web, um, their email list, and they're looking for counselors at $9 an hour. So, improvement or things that were hoping to increase their salaries over there, and I guess that didn't happen. So, I don't know how that's going to go for them. So I have a daughter who turned 16 on July 7th, <laughs> who is interested in working at camp. So that's like eight days of camp where she's not of the right age. What do we do for teen camp? Do they have to be 12 before May 31st? So we had, our counselors need to be 16 before the start of camp. So camp starts this year, June 24th. The Raider's birthday is July 7th. Well, that's what happened to my son. He was diabetic camp. His yeah. birthday was July 31st, so he didn't get a visit until next year. Yeah. What, what was the deadline on that? I don't know. It was before camp started, but he wasn't. Yeah. So it was, it's almost like, you know, it would be eight days of camp. I don't think it's our place. I think it most of us. Yeah, it's more of a thing for me, too. Okay. Maybe we can give our opinions, but I think. I, I agree. Yeah. I think at the very least, this board would help us support it before it goes to the select board. Mm -hmm. no. Don't ask the board if you all aren't in favor of the waiver. Usually. Well, it would also sort of depend, too, if we even need counselors, right? I mean, <laughs> that's, uh, that's kind of tricky though because then you need that's fun. <laughs> I don't think of that one. No, that might be a little tricky, but um, I, yeah, I mean, I would, I would support it. We, we kind of put some rules over this. We have a counselor, but she's not in the room. No. In my mind. No. So I would support bringing it to the board. they're familiar with the camp and they've been through it or know it well. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I kind of, I don't know about that. <laughs> For whatever reason, but. Well, she'd be she able to like camp. anybody else, right? Right. Right. So she would have those parts right. for her. But I guess at this point, I would probably almost say that stipulation would only be if we needed to hire. If we didn't give a full staff. Yeah. Yeah. As long as they go through the, the, the process.
sent over, so when, I, when you register, you send over all the changes from 2018 to 2019. So I actually sent them that registration packet yeah. as a guide, and I actually spelled everything out. But for whatever reason, a lot of the changes weren't made. But Kelly, what I realized before I, right before I came here was they put me in edit mode. Oh. So a lot of the informational stuff, I think I can go in there and change. Nice. Um, but it's going to be like a financial. I haven't even gotten to the financial part yet. Mm. I was on the welcome page, and there wasn't anything in there that was actually right. <laughs> so I need to change everything. But, I mean, if I can get through it tonight when I get home, that's good. I mean, I can maybe. Anyway, so I think, I think we can still go live Friday morning as long as I can get through the stuff I need to get through tonight. I've already called them. I've sent an email to let them know that I wasn't that happy, and I'll be calling in the morning, so any changes that need to be done, I will be on the phone with them when I get it done, so hopefully we're still good for the 8th. Um, but I've already had a few people ask me about it, too, which is good. So I've had some emails from folks asking mm -hmm. questions about it, which is really good. I've heard, a lot of people have said that they've heard good things about it, and so I'm kind of excited about that. It's really good. Um, so that's all I can tell you guys right now, though. That's all I have. Um, I do have paper packets with me. I think if it's okay, I'm going to leave some here at the town hall. So, so I have people want paper. A couple of questions. Okay. Can I have one of your paper packets? I can't spare one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no paper for you. No paper for you. Um, so. The one that you is it the same one? Oh, you um, got front and back, they're so good. Yeah, well, <laughs> let me just double check yours. Um, no, you've got an old version. Oh, okay. So if I would you like it? Yeah, I'll take it. Um, if I can get you, um, let me see what I do with it. I am working on a flyer for Teen Camp. This is what I have so far. Yeah, I want to talk to you about that too. So, so it's um, if I can get you this flyer in the next 24 hours, can I go in there as so parents know what's going on each week? What's the change look like? Is that going to be, are you going to be able to do that? I can. Yep, I can. I would just need to reprint everything, which is fine. Or just attach it to the back. Yep. Just send it over when you're done. Um, next couple of months. Um, my kids talked about Diana's baths today. I guess. I, I love that place. Yeah. Let me try it. So it's it's. I was like, ooh, that would be really neat. It's up in North Conway, or not quite to North Conway, but it's it's a short hike. Natural waterfalls and there's places to um, like jump in in the water and it's not like crazy over your head and stuff like that. So we can put put it in or have a yeah. state park or something that would be nice. Or a hike if we're not going to camp. My other question in regards to the registration packet, going back there on page two, you said may have complete registration with registration fee to the town of Rollinsford dropped off. At the town hall in a sealed envelope, or at the Rollins for grade school, who is the responsible party for collecting them here at the grade school? Caroline. Well, I usually <laughs> I take them from the grade school, so the secretary takes them, and then I go down from her. Same thing we did last year. Okay. There's a new staff at school, so I make I'm there. I should be fine. I can talk. And. <laughs> she said she was going to talk to Rich and they were going to come up with a system because they were just last year left out on the bookshelf. Um, come up with a system. Yeah. And so if we have a contact person there, and last year the town staff had a couple people come in with questions, and they were requested last year a contact person. So if somebody comes in with questions, that they could call somebody right away and get an answer. Well, if it's registration, they can call me. Um, 
or email the uh, recreation um, email. I think that's more important. But, um, so I actually got, I, and I talked to V about this, I got a email on the, on the Gmail account from a parent who hasn't done our camp yet and had a few questions and could I please call her. So I actually called her this morning. So, I mean, that all works really, worked out really well. Um, she had hesitations and I think I made sure that she didn't have hesitations anymore. So, um, you can also pass it off to the rec director as soon as you have one. Oh, yeah, and that's a good idea. I know, that's the problem with that. When you have one, it's like, ah, oh, why don't you go next step to someone else? <laughs> So I did have a question. So when I talked to this woman, um, she asked me, and I couldn't remember what we all decided, and I'm trying to look at this. She wanted to know about refunds. And so what did we, what was our, I knew we had to pay, I told her you had to pay in full by June 10th. Mm -hmm. And is there a possibility of refunds? Suppose they change their minds after that, but before the start of camp, what did we decide about that? Well. Sorry, I'm, I'm being repetitive. Yeah, our, our refund policy was June 1. Was it June 1st? Yeah, it was June 1st. And it is in the parent handbook. Yep. Okay. Is it a parent handbook? Okay. It's on, um, it's online. Okay. And don't they have to give us written? Well, what if they don't pay? Oh, okay. if they don't pay on June 10th, then they don't. Well, there we go. <laughs> it's like three steps. <laughs> That's camp. Refund policy, camp fees. A refund request must be submitted in writing no later than June 1st, 2019. Okay. Less the $50 non-refundable deposit. Yeah. I am wondering I, I that that was if case, we yeah. could take out the $50 less the non-refundable deposit in case they have campers in both camps. It's not going to be $50 if you have a camper in both camps. It'll be $70. Well, you don't want to remove it, but you want it to be to rewrite it. You want to rewrite it. I want to take out the $50. Just say no, less the non-refundable deposit. Damn it! Damn it! Trying to get ahead of myself. I'll cross that out. Okay, so it's page eleven, and I'm wondering if that should be highlighted or bolded since. Can it just say registration fee? Yeah, that's yeah. What it, should it, should it should just take out the fifty dollars less the non-refundable deposit. Registration. Well, registration. Yeah. It should be whatever we're calling it. Yeah, it's registration. It's a dollar amount. Okay. And so I had wondered if that should be bolded since it has a date and a financial consequence. Okay. Well, I hear if registration is money from the bank. That's on the paper packet, yeah. But I was just concerned that it. If uh, they have somebody in both camps and oh, they paid seventy dollars for registration fee, oh. we're going to give them back twenty dollars that teen camp couldn't use. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. And um, I had a question about the snack policy. Um, and Caroline, I'm glad that you're here. With the auditing, because I know it says. Child will have an account, and, and you can have a family. Can we have a family account? You can yes. have a family account as long as everybody's clear about how it works, you know, and you're keeping okay. track of it. Because I think that would be better, right? For I think that yeah. could be cleaner. Yeah. Especially, yeah, multiple kids can be on one account, and then you're less likely to have fifty cents left over here and twenty-five cents left over there. You can make better use of. So are we moving on to the registration packet? Or the parent handbook? Or are we still on the registration packet? Oh, I thought it was kind of the same. I think, yeah, we're, we're kind of skipping all over the place. It's kind of four. Because you can give us all the ones that you think that we can give us. Well, just be careful <laughs> of the fact that, okay, so, so I would say be about it. Are you going to make, if you have more than one kid, it will be a family account, or it will be at the discretion of the parents, or what? You know, you've got one kid who eats popsicles all day long, and the other kid doesn't have any money left because yeah. the other kid eats popsicles all day long. So the parent might want them to be separate for that reason? And, well, we're like talking about the domestic ones. 
in a nutrition snack in the juice. Some parents won't want juice for their kids. Well, they shouldn't know what they give their kids. <laughs> <laughs> Can we? Uh, in a beverage. Wait, you know. what, where, where, where are you? Yeah, what are you talking about? To age 18. Well, I, I, I'm not sure if we need to get into the. Wait, page 18. Or page 8, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My ballot is 18. I'm not sure if we are in the business of telling who. I agree, but I'm wondering, like, does it need to say juice or can it say and the beverage? Where are we? So we're on, um, it's at the top. Right here. Right here. Right here. Okay. Um, <coughs> I think I'm on the, I think I have the old, one point this nine. is my old policy. <laughs> So we can take that out. We can take juice out of the beverage. And um, I don't think you have to use the mint picture there. It's really a fresh orange. Are we selling water this year? Because it's in here twice that we're selling water for a yep. dollar. We did not sell it last year because we were left with an abundance of it in 2017. Well, I say that we still have some, even if we start out with a 24 pack or two 24 packs or something and have it on hand just in case. Some people like to melt all of that. It costs us $6 for two 24 packs, you know? Uh, we can actually probably get them donated from different vendors, and then if we need to, we can replenish the supply. I was just wondering, because we had like four or five cases left over at 20, in 2017, if we were going back to selling water. Don't take all of Um, our under if you go down, the kids can't bring cards to camp. Are they going to be available at the camp? Like card decks of any kind should remain at home, so they can't bring play cards for their downtime. We always uh, I'm not even sure. that's actually a good question. I know we adopted these policies in Barrington, and we I just had the no card policy in there. And I'm wondering, and this is the first year we've ever like talked about it. Uh, I was just wondering if we're keeping that or if we're. I personally would keep it. <clears throat> if you want, I mean, playing cards should not cost much. It's probably just how we donate them. There's probably teachers who have the kids and we love them that mm -hmm. we can look up and get. Only because right now there's not anything that's, there's still Pokemon cards out there and stuff, but it's not a really big thing right now. I'd mm -hmm. just be concerned if at another point you never know. When something is going to be the next thing that, you know, when my older son was at that age, it was the Pokemon cards and kids stealing cards from other kids and, you know, trying to play a game and mm -hmm. somebody would cheat. And I think you're just better off not having them there. And then maybe we buy a pack or two or more if we get a donation of a gift of Playing cards, yeah. Are we going to grab that? So I just didn't know, since they're not going to, since they can't bring them, can we mention we'll have some, that we'll, camp will provide the extra cards or anything? No, I just, well, you can say, you, you, it is said that over here. Playing cards are available on um, 1.5.4, basically it says a variety of games are played at camp. Oh, really? And they're offered as well as lawn games, arts, crafts, board games, and card games. I would leave it at that so yep. that you're not over-obligating yourself in future <laughs> years. Agree. Did you see anything else, Gary? Oh, uh, yes. Um, under page five, it says each group will have their own assigned zone. My question is, are we making a zone signed for teen camp too? So on Friday morning, uh, this is just for us to know. Um, if the teen campers will have a place to put their stuff. Like what did you guys do last year with all your the teen items? That's a question. Probably better to answer. I don't know. I think we just kind of we just kind of threw their stuff inside. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't. I think I would hope the teens can keep track of their own stuff. Right. I mean, they just kind of. 
found Katie, and that was kind of, you know. Well, we've had problems with ants getting in lunch boxes and stuff. Well, they, it was inside. It was all inside. So they put whatever we did with our stuff. Didn't they hang up their backpacks on um, hooks last year down the hallway? Yeah, I thought all the kids did, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. so I think they just did that on Fridays because they were doing, they pretty much did whatever the regular, the other camp was doing. So, so further yeah. down that, um, Further down that page, you have your daily schedule. Is there any way we can make it bigger so it's readable? Or yeah, we can. We can try. We can put it in there. Yeah, or distribute it. Or put a page in there that shows what the, what our daily schedule is. Because I have a really hard time reading that. Yeah. All right. I'll see what we do to make it bigger. Um, so on page six, you said on, or it says, not one of the kids it, that Friday afternoons will be on-site special activity. This coincides with the pool. Is that correct information? I don't know. No. And if it's not Friday afternoons, when will the special activity on-site be happening? Periodically. Mm -hmm. Is it scheduled? <laughs> Periodically, there may be a special activity going on. Well, now remember that schedule that you said that was too small to read. So that's the schedule that we sort of came up with. Um, but yeah, it, like, that's really, that it's going to be up to the director. So I think maybe what we need to do is make it maybe a little big. Or call it a sample schedule. Right? Right. Yes. It is called a sample schedule. Yeah. 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 So now let's, let's maybe just say um, these typically happen once a week and we'll be out. Um, one five five page six under um, on site special activity. It's the last sentence. Oh right, okay. Um, maybe just remove that. I, I think just remove the last sentence almost. These typically happen on Friday afternoons. I mean, I think you know. You could just take out these typically happen right. at mm -hmm. Friday afternoons and leave, and we'll be announced. Yeah. Yep, we'll do. Um, and it's one shirt per family and not um, one shirt per camper? Yeah. So, yeah. so you're going to pay $7 for one of the twins to get a shirt? Yeah. Yeah, that's the way it's always done. Yeah. Okay. Um, how are we enforcing them? paying within 48 hours if they show up without a shirt. So there's a form. Um, Brittany did a form last year. She never had to use it, but there is a, um, there's a template out there. Okay. Um, do we have that stuff right there? Mm -hmm. How do we make sure that we are paid ahead of time? Are they going to be paid part of administration? Are they going to the director on the day of the- Are you talking about the field trip? Yes. So we're going to have to, the director's going to have to figure that out. It's not going to be part of the registration packet. And oh, that's, no. And that's spelled out. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're back to having this report with mm -hmm. who signed up to go, did they actually go, and did they pay mm -hmm. for every field trip? Yep. But there's not there's any no. field trip. Well, every field trip that is like built outside Which, of registration. But there's only going to be like what? Three? Three? three two or three? Or three. Yeah. Well, okay. really, really three because one of them's a One's a state park, the other one is a state park. So three. Okay. So, yes. so as long as you're on top of that and you make sure people are paid ahead of time, is, there, is busing yeah. including, included in your. Bill? So they're just yes. paying Sweet. for the actual oh, thing. thing. Okay, that's good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you were paying. It's affected their life so much. Okay. Hopefully, in a much better way than we did. So refunds will be given if you have a call or an email 24 hours prior to the field trip day. How are we issuing field trip refunds? And shouldn't it be email or written notice? Because somebody could say I called and didn't get an answer. Well, and hold the phone because what if, like, what is your obligation with wherever you're going? Mm -hmm. 
can because if they're not going to refund your money, you shouldn't be refunding the money. That's true. I don't think they should be for that stuff because of that. You know, like the state park thing, it doesn't matter because, mm -hmm. but if you are calling these places and saying, I'm coming with 25 kids. Right, and then you have 20, yeah. are they gonna charge you for 25? Mm -hmm. That's true. Because we want to go to the <laughs> right? So let's like just, that, yeah, for one. example, there's one and that's, that would be um, ahead of time. Ahead of time. Yeah, ticket yeah. ahead of time. Right. So we, so you were just saying, um, sorry. sorry, there are no refunds for these because they have to be booked ahead of time. I think that's reasonable. Paid for and booked ahead of time. Yeah. And that would also simplify the paying of them. Yeah. If you knew how many people you were paying for, you can get an invoice and pay for the whole thing actually ahead of time. That would be way smoother. Yeah. And it saves, like, mm -hmm. you can't, then they can't say, oh, I paid for Um, so we'll change it up. Contact contact the office. Does that mean that contacts you, D? Does that mean contact the directors? When does the director take over upon hire date? Um, well, where, 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 what are you looking at? 1.7.1. Parents must contact the office when. Oh, okay. so Some of them. This is when you love parents and think of parents and have an office. Some of them will. Um, like when registration changes, that should be they contact B. Um, and then I think the rest of them, they should be contacting the director. Um, well, I don't think it can be like upon hiring because she's going to have to be, or he, she's going to have to be told what the policies and get familiarized. You know, yeah. you can't just say, okay. I actually thought there was something else in here that had the contact. The contact information is further down. Yeah, but I thought there was something in here that spelled out something like that. I Maybe mean, I might have put it somewhere else. Besides here. Okay. So good point. And and right under it, parents one point seven two. Parents will be contacted immediately when. Do we need to put anything on there that there will be no nursing? Staff there? Do we need a disclaimer or anything to say there is no nursing staff? I know it's on uh, uh, paperwork. We don't have registration papers. <coughs> There's no. Um, oh, the form. And then on page nine, about movies, there's a section that we will show movies. But I know the PTO just looked into it, and I sent this out to everybody today. Um, That's a ripoff. American I swear. Kansas Society. If we do not <laughs> get a license to show movies in a public setting, we can be fined between $750 and $150,000. So, to show a movie, and so if we three hundred bucks they want three hundred bucks for three months from June, July, and August. So contingency fund is it? A contingency <laughs> type of movie? No, any it's movie. No. It's um, isn't that amazing? I'll, uh, the library used to buy a license for when they? they would show, and that's why they don't anymore. Is because it wasn't it's, worth it. Because you know, you know, the, the number of people who would show up to the movies didn't justify that. No, it's overdone, too. But they're bigger, so it's yeah, easier to justify yeah. that cost. That's terrible. So, yeah, you see that. So, mm -hmm. if, you, if you're a member, you get a little discount, but I don't even know what the member... American Camp, Camp Association. Oh. Well, so, what is the membership? How much is the membership? Does it even know. make sense that you get a $65, you know? Um, also, in your parent handbook, it says that you may be showing G or P. But I thought I read somewhere else in one of your other flyers or something that it would only be G movies. 
No, there's a there's a yeah, there's a there's a place to um, signature her parents. Yeah, it was the signature thing that we you know will only you know. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, there's a difference. There's authorization to view G movies only, and authorization to view both. Do your all right? Okay, okay. Because that's what I was just going to distinguish between the two. Good. So if we're going to do movies, we need to discuss this. whether this is a viable expense to do and where does it come from. And Caroline, this is a perfect example. Can we use contingency money for this if we have it in our budget? Or is this what do you mean about contingency money? Like, Did you all budget for a contingency within recreation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a contingency within both camps. So I would say potentially get a clear vote of the board. Talk, make sure Denise is part of that conversation. Um, but careful about using contingency when you're not off the ground yet and mm -hmm. you might actually need it for a more serious reason. So I would, I would delay, uh, you know, maybe change your paperwork that there may be movies or something um, rather than obligating yourselves to definitely showing movies. And that way it's an option for later. You have your sign-offs that your kids are allowed to or not allowed to, and then you can make that decision if you decide that it's late enough in the game that you're feeling secure about your financial situation. That would be my suggestion. Okay. Uh, let's stay. How much money did you budget for contingency? Teen camp has six hundred and fifty dollars. Um, it was a high number. Um, Eighteen hundred. Uh, Fifteen hundred. Okay. So between the two, it's over two thousand. That's not bad. That's that was a good idea. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, if we don't get all of the campers we are expecting, right, the yeah. contingency will be drastically reduced. Mm -hmm. if it's not well, everything will be reduced, yeah. yes. So that's where I would, that's why it's a good idea that you did it and I would caution you about using it too early. Mm -hmm. How often do they show us movies? Well, so we had some complaints last year that they showed them too much. Yeah. But it was, but it was a rainy, it was right. a rainy summer. I mean, it really was. And that's really the only time that, when I was in the building, mm -hmm. that was the only time they were. Right. And it was like, I mean, how long was the movie? It was only for an hour and a half or whatever. You know, part of the day. Right. right. But it is good if they're inside all day long. I mean, it's hard to, first of all, you can't use the gym for any activities because all the kids are in the gym. So, yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough situation with, the, with bad weather. There's not, there's not a lot to be done. <laughs> Unless you can come up with some sort of all camp game activity, like an all camp bingo or something like that, to keep them interested for a while. A charade, for instance. Something like that. Yeah. That that will last about twenty minutes. Yeah. Maybe. Hey, could we get a grant for this? Could this this be a grant? Grant. <laughs> grant, Celia. I. <laughs> Child's um, camp 
cash? Does it go to the director? Does it go in with our registration? So if there is, I'm not putting it in the registration. No. no. So we'll have that worked out. In fact, I put that on the online registration. Um, I gave them a glimpse of what the camp cash is about, but also said um, details when camp opens sort of thing. So we'll, we'll, leave, it to that. we'll leave that up to the director to figure out. Okay. Um, How did you do that last year? Did you put check and cash? I think she did both, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And she managed that all on site. It wasn't through my office. No, we don't index so what if it was it? But what if it was a check? Well, it, it, all the cash eventually came through my office anyway, okay. but nobody came to me to say, put this on my kid's account. Okay. It all went through camp. Okay. And then okay, I understand. Yeah. So, uh, down for that, that page, it says camper to staff ratio. You do not have teen ratio on here. Mm -hmm. Should it be there? Should no. it not be? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my question is, is it too bearable? <laughs> they don't need to know anything. <laughs> um, so <laughs> you have the contact information. What is the protocol? And it says to contact on-site staff. Please call. How do they get hold of Team Camp? Do they call the on-site director and then get hold? And then the on-site director get hold of Team Camp? How did that work last year? That is a good camp? question. You know what? We just had Katie had her own personal cell phone. So is that something that we need to think about? Too? I don't think you can require, well, or if you're going to require somebody to use their own personal property as a condition of employment, you need to be up front about that and everybody signing off on that on the offer letter. Otherwise, I wouldn't say surprise. We're going to, you know, text you when a parent calls me and has, you know, needs to reach their kid. I'm going to text you on your personal cell phone. Um, well, also, most of the teen campers all had their own phones with them. That's not. And are they allowed to? Yes. Teen campers are. That needs to change in the policy handbook, so we can change that. Teen, teen campers are allowed to have their cell phones with them. Um, we actually had more than two that didn't carry a phone. And, and we, yeah, at one point in time, somebody needed to do something, and I was like, here, take my phone. Then if, if you're going to rely on kids' phones, then make sure the director is getting every child's phone number so that yeah. you can contact them. So maybe maybe that's what we, we maybe we need to have that discussion with the teen camp director. We did not have that as a, poli or as a part of our organization that they get their own cell phone too for the summer. Because if we're making, right, we decided as as a group or the select board that each director was their own separate entity, right? Like before, the team camp director was under the camp director, so that was the chain of command. But if it's really two separate people, that they can each have a phone and a number. Probably could happen, huh? So, what is the structure? You, you have a director and assistant director. Who's in charge of team camp? Team camp director. Who is equal to the camp rally director? Yes. Which was so you have two last directors. Year. Yes. yes. Okay. Last year it wasn't like that. This year it's changed. Two directors. Do you have two assistant directors? No, no. just one assistant okay. for camp rally and one counselor if needed for if the team. So, we, I think so that's an expense that we didn't account for. So if we <laughs> get a, should we should there be two phones and numbers? And if you're yeah, if you're going to I mean, get the team, I would I would say yes. I think I mean that the team director certainly is off property far more than. Um, I would I would encourage you to be somewhat vague in your handbook about it to allow you flexibility because it may be that you have a team director who's perfectly friendly with the other director. Don't don't get a phone if you don't need a phone. Yeah. You're not, like, yeah. You know, people are accustomed to using their phone all the time. Especially younger people wouldn't think twice of sharing their number with other counselors and other directors. So that could work and if that works, that's a happy thing and go with it. Yeah. You know. 
but just know that you might have to supply. Right. Um, so do, did that number for the camp cell phone change from 2017 to 2018, or is that? I think it was different. So if it changed, do we know if this number is still valid? Has the phone remained active? Has it become inactive? I have it. So I was thinking if we could check that. Yes. <laughs> it is the right number, too. <laughs> and and it's, I called it. <laughs> is texting an option? Is texting an yep. option? Yep. Then that should probably be in there, too. Are you pressing, like, C three times for, like, <laughs> like three, like, like, is it, is it like that? Or is it like a smartphone so it's that you can? Phone. It's a smartphone. Awesome. Yeah, okay. it's, sim it's similar to that. A little bit bigger. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we may have to buy minutes for it, but. I, I have a question about the phone. I have to check that. Um, I believe our little girl was at BB since she was 12, she's 12, so it wouldn't matter, but what if we had another student um, that was not 12, that was in regular camp, and she needs, or he needs her, their phone, so that would be an For exception. Yeah. I, I, I believe we've done, because we know that they are um, I just didn't monitored. know if, if the policy said no phones at all, or if that and, So what we did last year was we it. kept it as no phones, but we, we took it on a case-by-case -case basis. And that's what he came to us. She has her phone because it'd be set up to tell her that yeah. her blood sugars are low. Right. right. And usually their parents yeah. are monitoring them, too, via yeah. the, the internet. I think we did something with the internet in yeah. schools last summer that she had access and could, their parents could keep track, too. So, Dee, since you have the phone, are you answering all the questions or that are coming in via now? Or once this goes out, are you answering all the questions? Is the director answering the questions? Is that defined? Who gets the phone? Upon, I'm like, once this goes out, who's answering those questions until camp starts? Who's an and is this only between nine and four when camp is open, or can they call at five in the morning if their kid is sick? And leave a message. Too many questions. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So here's what Brittany did and I agreed with her last year. She had a conversation with us. She had the phone, but she would not, she kept business hours on the phone. Yeah. So she would be, whatever, 8 to 5 or 7.30 to 5.30. She would not answer before and she would not answer after. So in between, she could, so if somebody called at 5 a.m. and left a message on her phone, then great, she went, she'll get it at 7.30. Um, as far as, I think, I can make it clear somewhere that as far as, if there's any business related questions, they can go to the recreation email. They can do that. They can put the phone numbers not activated until, until summer. summer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, under page 11, teen camp does not get signed in or signed out. They have, a, they have walking waivers. And you have here that Camp Raleigh and TA requires each camper to be signed in and out each day by a parent or guardian? Um, I actually thought we were still doing, we didn't do that last year. The teen could go in and out as needed. Teens could, could they, teens sign themselves in and out. So what we did last year was teen could sign themselves, um, teen, I, I put in my note, teen does not necessarily get checked in and out every day, but parents should notify us if the child does not show up or if the child is not going to be there, and if the child does not show up, we need to call the parents. At their schedule time. I would, I would make sure that even if the kids can do it, that they're signing in and signing out, so you know that you are expected to, you know, see Bobby in the hallway, or, you know, who are you accountable for right now, even if they have the authority to do it on their own? Make sure you're keeping track. Well, we have a, a and with, with teen camp, it's a weekly sign-up only, so we know who's supposed to be there. Every well, week. okay, but, you know, he didn't come on Tuesday. Did right. he get lost on the way there? Did the parents expect that he was there? Right. You know, have, knowing that he signed in at 8 o'clock would be really helpful. If you're not seeing him at 9, right. he at least signed in at 8, and, that, and that's more information. Right. So I would still do that. Oh, yeah. Especially if you have yeah. similar parents. Yes, right. yes. So I just think the team, and like we have the walking waivers, but what happens if something happens to them on their way in? 
and they never show. And are we supposed to multiply the parents too? I thought it would be a good idea. So are we saying that, just to back up for a second, so teenage venture, they can sign themselves in, but they have to sign? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And, and sign themselves out yeah. too. In and out. Yeah. They in and have out. to sign in and, and then we yeah. need to, what happens if they don't show? And they're able to read it. Do we notify parents? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That was the, yes. They were on the list of being there that week, and they weren't there because they were on a phone call. Um, who's doing that in a, in a job description be, somewhere? Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, be the boot camp director. But just make sure that that's, you know, if it's not in the job description, that it's in the offer letter, that this is one of your yeah. required duties. Under penalty, um, is the... Late charges um, for late pickups um, per family or per child? Uh, okay. Okay. Well, th this is for Camp Raleigh. Because oh, Team Camp Raleigh, no. Um, and then. Later on that page, I was wondering if you should put in highlight somehow or bold that the parents, guardians, and campers must sign the behavior management policy and return it quickly. That is here somewhere. It's on page 12. And it's not like, it wouldn't catch your eye if you're just flipping through this. So I was wondering if there's a way to make it bolder that they must sign it and bring it to camp with them the first day. So they actually have the first day. And my copy came out with a huge gap on the top of page 14. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's been corrected or not. Well, it's my too. Yeah, I did it's not been corrected. <laughs> so that's, I thought that was just a reformatting of that. Um, and do we have, this is a, oh, um, incident reports which are right underneath that. Um, on page 14. Are we giving a copy of the incident report to the parents? Or um, are they the same in-house? The parents signing them at pickup? Uh, the parents sign them. Yeah, I think that's in the, the staff uh, handbook. Okay. The staff policy handbook. And in the staff policy handbook, is there something about photocopying and like using the school equipment versus the town hall equipment? Because once we start using the school equipment, we muddy the waters about who pays for what. Like Brittany, I mean, our previous director worked at the school, so she was able to make a lot of photocopies if necessary. Uh, I would check with Rich. If he's able to know the history, that all came about from a previous, previous director and staff who were going in the air conditioned copy room and hanging out. <laughs> and things were being misused. I, I honestly don't believe there would be an issue if you had to run in and make a copy. It was a matter of kids eating pizza on the counter <laughs> and stuff getting all over the place. And it was misused. It wasn't just making a copy. If we could back up to incident reports, it's really important that if somebody is or if there's, you know, any bigger deal than, you know, minor playground scuffles or whatever, you know, it, I need to report things to the insurance company, um, depending on the gravity, perhaps the same day, but certainly within five calendar days. So, what you would, know, what would like, yeah. I think, I think if it's, um, if anybody's getting hurt and if property is getting hurt, I, was just, I mean, that's broad and right. vague, but um, it's safer to report it and have nothing come of it. Um, so in, in our whole communication, that would, would we want to get that directly from the camp director to you? Um, yes. Okay. There's a lot of information about date and time, who, whose address and phone number, who saw it, you know. Um, so would you want to get
get all incident reports, not that there's a lot of them, but do you want to make, do you want to see them in the deficit? Would that be fair to say, or do you want to still? If I can get them, like, email saying day, that would be good. That way I have the five calendar days in case it happens on a Friday afternoon or something. Um, yes, and in the meantime, I'm going to get clarification from the insurance company. Um, one would hope that people have their own health insurance, and but you don't know if they're going to claim that they tripped and, trip and fell, and therefore it's you know going to fall on us or, or what have you. So, um, yes, but it's important to know who, you know who saw it and who did it get reported to, and what was done, and and what if anything was done. Yes, but that, they don't ask that. But yes, that's also important. Do you mean should she see them? I wouldn't think so. That would be a behavioral issue at the camp director. So I would, um, that's a really good question because the point is that anything that happens could be cons construed as a liability against the town if it is perceived that we are not doing whatever our due diligence is in managing or correcting the situation. So to that end, I would say maybe, and let me talk to the insurance company and find out what they suggest about those things and where the line in the sand is. That's a good question. Uh-oh, you're going to be added to our to-do list now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Best to know now. So those were all my notes. Um, nothing. <laughs> Good job, that was very comprehensive. I went through, I made some little posts and stuff like that. All right, are we behind schedule? Uh, look at my <laughs> yes, we are. Marketing, where are we? Um, okay. Packet, review, etc. So, maybe. Right, so we wanted, so once we get, um, so once we go live, or even before that, this week, we need to figure out where we're going to start um, posting and getting the word out. So, and we also, I need to assign people to help with the marketing. I, I can do it, but I've got a lot of other stuff to do too. So we need to share the love. <laughs> so what are you, what are you thinking in regards to, is it? more than just online marketing, is that what you're Yeah, I'm thinking that part of the responsibility should be, um, so we've got Facebook, Yeah. so we want to keep our Facebook page up to date, right? Right. Um, we want to figure out how we're marketing the camp, so where are we hanging things, who are we contacting um, to talk about the camp, um, what other Facebook avenues do we have, what other social media av avenues do we have available to us to get the word out. Are we boosting the posts on Facebook? We um, have in the past. We have because the last Facebook message I sent out went to an extraordinary amount of people. And then that's when I realized, right, we boosted it. So. And some of the boosts require a fee. And we had a member that was paying a fee out of their pocket to boost it. Okay. I'm not sure if that's actually happening still. Um, but for whatever reason, we reached a lot of people with that last Facebook post I sent out. So that's the so in, as far as marketing is concerned, that's what we're looking at doing. So I mean, again, I can I can do it. I can still do the camp Facebook page, um, but well, ultimately, you know, our our primary, you know, I, I think we all want as many volunteer kids to be a part of this. So our, I think our first step would be flyers out to. Every kid in the school, right? So we did that with the registration opening. Oh, we got all of it. Yeah. So we did that. But I don't know. I would have come <laughs> when you got back from February vacation. Oh, so I probably don't know. Uh, so we so we did that. Okay. So the next step is when registration opens. I mean, 
I can still go on there and say, you know, you get three or two days left or whatever it is and still really get the word out that way and keep sharing it to all the other mm -hmm. Longsford web pages and some is worth happening. I, I put it out there too. Um, but and at the school, even if you put a hacked page mm -hmm. and send it home, especially if you could do it on like fluorescent paper and send yep. it home closer to you. Can also, um, I can leave a message with Allison um, for afternoon meetings. That's your answer. Okay. So that's another good idea. Uh, I'm not meeting, so afternoon announcements. Do you remember? Bring home your, or bring back your stuff. Celia, who was your contact? Um, was it the uh, middle school? That, no. What schools did you go to last year? Summerswood schools. I don't think I think you all said. I can do that again. Okay. But it's going to require. Caroline, when we came here and got 1,100 copies done, because that's what we need for the two elementary schools. In, um, so it, it seems like so many copies. Yeah, it seems like a lot, but. But they say only 40% of their kids get email. So you're right. more likely to get a larger group of them if you get something in the bag. So are you thinking, um, what we should do is do a half page, which is a great idea. Um, do a half page sort of mini flyer saying registration open with the details of how to get to registration. Okay. Um, I probably wouldn't put out full details like I did last time. I wouldn't be able to fit it all. Right.
was 1,200 um, back-to-back things that went out from the senior mails, all of those cost $200. Is that more efficient than doing it here, or is it better to do it here? Or since it's not in our budget, we can't use it as much. Okay. Yeah, that would be $200. Well, so, <laughs> so what they did was $200. That, like, you know, that was cardstock, and it was a funny shape. Yeah. So it required cutting. So I would say, if you want to do a half sheet, that's a good idea. In that case, it might be more economical to go with the printer because she has a way to make half sheets so that you all are not standing with paper cutters and cutting all these sheets. Um, if it's not a half sheet, I would ask her directly what would it cost to print $1,100 you know, $1, of something double-sided on a colored piece and just know that she has whatever colors in stock. Maybe she has 1,100 of them, um, but she may have to order if you want a special color, or maybe she doesn't have that much of anything in particular. But I think it's worth asking her, you know, what would it cost to print 1,100 of that something? Um, I'm trying to think. I think it's like three cents. I only meant color to go to the grade school because it will stand out. Oh, I see. That's the only thing I meant. A different, mm -hmm. you know, different than this. I would suggest if you're going to put something like at the post office or like somewhere on a bulletin board, this is like beautiful and I want to look at it. <laughs> you know, colored pieces of paper even with black and white, um, it's less expensive than color ink, mm -hmm. but I would just, you know, if you're going to go to 20 places, get 20 copies of that. Okay. Because that's that stands out in and of you know it's not colored paper, and you can even cut you know put it on colored paper, but that's really beautiful and it stands out. That would be my suggestion. Okay. And then if you're going to drop off, you know if you're going to get more cost effective, then I think the place to do that might be with the cup the copies that go to other schools maybe. But you know, it's not any, you know, it's not an enormous expense. But I would check with with B and B and see what she says about cost. I don't think it's a couple hundred dollars, but okay. I mean I may not be doing my math. She said well, she's willing to work with them when this is when I'm finished working and that kind of thing. Well yeah, you know, business is business and you know, she's good to us. I don't mind cutting the stuff in half at the school. You know, that's not a huge amount. I might be able to get, I don't know, let me think about this because I might be able to help too with some of the printing. Yeah, let me think about that. So, I can go to the summer school school. Kelly, you have a contact at Marshall Middle. What about, we have discussed briefly, but they didn't like me. <laughs> I dropped a bunch of flyers and they kind of they sat at a table. It was kind of a short answer. Yeah. I don't, I don't think they were distributed to anybody. It was like yeah, the kids happened to walk by it <laughs> and, wanted it. <laughs> and wanted it, then, then it got to them, yeah. Um, so I did in Publisher, which I think this one is, I can just do the front and back. That would be easy enough. So, are we going to try for any other schools? Do you think we should go to half the other schools in South Burlington area? Or what about Heather? Would she be willing to put it out, or is she running her own? No, I wish she was running her own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I almost felt bad that she was here because I know <laughs> we're asking her for her secrets. Um, <laughs> or what about the Dover schools? So we can mention that and get that for the, the Dover schools. I think so too. I think that's that's actually a good idea. I've talked to a few friends and they've given me a few avenues there um, that go to, that go to Dover School. Um, so there, I shared all the information with them and they're posting it to all their friends um, in Dover. Um, so we could go to the library to get the flyers there. There's already one there. I put oh. it there last week. Okay. Last Friday night I dropped one off at the Dover. 
library in the Bosley factory. Yeah. Child lights over there. Um, yeah. um, uh, Dos Amigos, um, Adele's coffee shop. Mm -hmm. The Hannaford does. Wow, yeah. where'd you go? I know. So you've got that. Uh, so I have world. not yet made it. And the Rollinsford Library has one, the Elliott Library has one, we haven't talked mm -hmm. about that yet. Um, and I'm going to take one over to the South Portland Library, because they allow that. And then I'm going to go see this too. And a couple other places I can go back to. Okay. All right, so I think coming out of this, the Monday <coughs> session, I'll work on getting the flyer out. I'll do front and front back out. Um, and I can actually call Dandy. Um, so the budget and finance is actually pretty real. We don't need to talk about anything there that I know of. I have nice. one question. Can we get, um, after the budget passes, can we look into getting the state park tax that we'd like? Because we need it for the sort of dangerous camp. Yeah. Well, we need it for, so we need it for, we need it for both camps. Both camps. So we need to put that on our agenda for the next meeting to okay. order the state park tax. Okay. When do we vote? Tuesday. This Tuesday? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. down the calendar. I do. I gotta figure out. I'm around. She's here. All right, so Celia, that's on there for the next meeting. Um, so programming? On team. Yeah, I so think. here's Raleigh. I'll just we can everybody can take one of these tablets. Sorry about that, Kelly. Okay, so empty. Okay. Um, if you don't have one, Kelly, but this is kind of what we came up with for um, Camp Raleigh. And in red, it's you get one of these where we're going to feed back the team to save money on buses. You can't use another one. Oh. Sorry. So none of this yeah. is set in stone, but it's just an idea of what Thank we're looking you. at. Do you want one or no? No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So as far as Camp Rally, that's all I have laid out right now. I was more interested in what Dean came up with. So I only brought one copy right now. I think I could. Well, I can pass this around. Um, this is the team's schedule, and I have the list of the first three weeks right here on my to-do list. The first three weeks. Um, Monday they will be hiking or going to York Beach, or not hiking, they will go to an archery center or York Beach. I'm thinking York Beach will be more viable. At the, they'll do Kittery, um, take like ropes course like we did last year. Um, and then on Friday they will do soccer or pool. And then on, um, the week of July 4th. It's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday that week. And they'll go to Blitz Air Park and um, Odeon State Park or something on the seacoast because Camp Raleigh is going to Odeon Point that week. Tuesday, they're going to hike Mount Major. Wednesday, they're going to go to the pool and volleyball if possible. And then week three, they're going to go to Funtown Splash Town. They're going to go to a state park on Wednesday, and then they're going to do a cooking class at Homegrown Eats, if we can schedule it down at the mouth. My other, then there's also Canopy Lakes in there. There's an indoor fun park, or there's indoor ascent in Dover, or Canopy, um, there's a Coco View, Co Coco yeah. Key, Coco Key, water park in um, Danvers, Mass on a Monday. And then the last week is either going to be indoor ascent or um, candy or Springs, yeah. which is a ropes course and a water park, depending on that. And so my other thought, Kelly and I have talked that team did not um, do as much sports as we liked last year. And thinking, getting a little bit ahead of myself, I was thinking about, wouldn't it be great if 
they could do some community service projects. And I looked at these when she said the week they're going to the baseball game um, or something, the week of superheroes, that they're going to have special guests, the firemen and the policemen. So I have come up with, on the side, a list of community service projects that the teens could do on Friday mornings around the community that if they choose not to do the sports, that we can work with. And I don't know how you guys feel about them possibly doing a community service project instead of doing sports. Or I think it's a huge advocate for that, so. I, I, I think it's fine. I think we have to be careful of, of balancing My thought was that some of the um, community service could be rainy day activities, like they, we could talk to the library and see if they needed any help and say it was a rainy day, we could go to the library. But then we also have other options that I'm looking into. Um, the archery center is indoor, so I've asked them, or I've drafted an email to them um, that people can look at if they want, asking them how much notice they would need. So that if it, we have a rain day, could we call them the day before and get so, them in? Yeah, rainy days feel good for me to the teens. Right, so that was, was fun to do last year. We went to Smitty's last year on a rainy day. So and the archery place is not far from there. So I was like, maybe they can do a morning movie or, and then go over to the archery center because the archery center, according to their schedule, opens at one o'clock. So I don't know if that would fit in the, schedule for a rainy day activity or not, but I was thinking of the different options and stuff. I think, I think ultimately, I would, you know, we would like our director to kind of, you know, we, we sort of have to, we're sort of forced to do, you know, definitely have a schedule because we have to advertise it at, that way, but if, you know, those Friday mornings would, you know, my vision was to have a sport morning. Um, you know, my vision for teen camp was so that our kids weren't sitting around on their electronic devices and were actually burning some calories. You know, they're doing that on, on you know, a couple of those days, but, you know, I, it didn't maybe work out because of it, it could have been just a whole personality grouping of some of the kids, you know, that were there last year. So maybe this year that'll work, you know. So I don't know. My personal feeling is I want my kids, I want my kids doing something. Um, whatever we can get them to do to move their bodies, like that's, that's my vision. What's your schedule last year have? It was all about the morning was a sport, and then the idea was that they got hot and sweaty and they went to the pool. <laughs> that was the idea. Another thing I would do, Celia, too, while you're doing this, is maybe put something in here like subject to change. Yeah, you definitely yeah. have to put the asterisk there. Mm -hmm. And I would put some of last year's had some of the um, places where they went, some of the logos from like Fun Hill Sports yeah, Show. Yeah. So that's going to go on the bottom. They all love yeah. Campy Lake. And, and honestly, I wonder if the Campy Lake one, if we could sort of do an extended, I don't know how that'll work, but extended day because we weren't ready to leave when we had to leave and we just stayed there for. Coco Key would be another day too where, you know, it's going to go quick. Right. Thing. Well, and that could be a rainy day. I think they have a, what did they have though? That was a, they Coco had a, Key, they had a four three, hour pass, four hour, four, four then it was 11 pass. in the morning to three, three in the afternoon, which was perfect for us, because <laughs> then if they get there at nine, they can chill for a few minutes, hop on the bus, and then if they hit traffic, they're in, it's in Danvers, Mass. 
Yeah. So then they're there at by eleven. They're there from eleven to three, three and then, and then they, they can shoot back up here and they get here. That by probably four. probably yeah. a little after four. Yeah. What, um, is, what is it's an indoor water park. Oh, it's got nice. slides and buckets and wow. oh, so it's a like too, how it? many um, last year how many teams had kids did you have on average? Eight, um, there's probably ten on it. We went from like seven was the lowest to fourteen was the highest. I, mean, I was just curious because when Trevor did camp a million years ago too, she did like there were all the boys in my neighborhood that were that age, um, like even into seventh grade, maybe even eighth. They didn't really go to camp, but they went over to play tournaments. Mm. You know, where they would do a knockout tournament mm -hmm. or um, I don't know that ball thing with the thing on the yeah, end, yeah, 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 tether ball or whatever. I mean, I mean, I remember going there and playing softball <laughs> down at the Legion. And um, that's kind of I'm like. <laughs> But that seemed to attract them, and they made like a poster of the, you know, the, right. but I don't know what you can do with, you know, like eight or ten kids. That right. Right. So, so yeah, I know you wanted to get me that within 24 hours, but even if you did the best you could and put subject to change, I can still. Yeah, I, in there. I was thinking about four. I could do what I did with, sorry, I'm looking towards you. Mm -hmm. um, I could do what I did with the Camp Raleigh sample schedule. And I can probably minimize it, but make it big enough to read and stick it next to it. How about could we also, you know, maybe take a little, you know, we can still, we can still um, have registration start for just Camp Raleigh on the eighth, and maybe, I don't know, maybe we postpone that so it's not. I mean, last year we it wasn't like right. we had people. And that's going to be tough because the way the registration is all up. up. Yeah. I mean, this is a pretty good, um, like, if I compare the two, like week one, I'm putting North Beach on there instead of the archery. Yeah, yeah that, I think that's a good idea. And then take flight, and then we have soccer in the pool. The second week, we have Blitz and Young. So if they have an indoor and an outdoor activity, and we know hiking Mount Major is not going to cost us anything. Right. And then we're into week three before we might have to change something. I think we go with it. Yeah. Um, and that it's subject to change due to weather. And then um, some of these state park visits, I know I'm going to be able to put it in. Like, B and I were talking that one of the weeks that we go with team, so like week seven, that could be White Lake or Alacoya or Pawtuckaway, something that the teens really enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they like White Lake. So that's what I was thinking. Was like here putting in White Lake, um, and then that's <coughs> one that both the camps could do, go, go to. Yeah. And then week five, this could be like Alacoya, and then if we need to, we can change it.
So right. we might not have, a, you know, we might not have pool availability that July 4th week. I don't know. Okay. Um, so so um, did he tell you about the other Fridays? I mean, he did not. He did not. So he's going to get back. He wasn't, he wasn't in front of his calendar, I guess, wherever he was. So he's going to let me know tomorrow if, what other Friday that we might need to switch this a day with. Okay, so um, donations and grants. Celia, I know that, are we almost ready to apply for the REF grant in the spring? Is it available? I, I was hoping to ask me when it would be available. Because we need long person. <laughs> <laughs> Two B days all my brain. Um, do we have um, information about it? Last year we missed it because we didn't know the deadline. And I don't know what the info is on that. And they gave a lot of, they had a successful play last year mm -hmm. at the school, but that's where a lot of the grant money went to last year, so I don't know if they have other monies available. So we need to ask. is I had brought to the last meeting and I gave a couple people a copy of the donation letter mm -hmm. if how that looks and if anybody's had a chance to review it I have not had a chance to look at it although I told you I would <laughs> I, not. I need to get that done so uh, it would be appreciated if we could get that done because that is needed for grants
while requesting information about the table for the PTO, and I have yet to hear back. I don't well, have Kate follow up with you. I don't know why. Okay. Kate. Kate is the person we need to talk to, and this year it's not voting is not happening here. It's right. happening at the Legion, which makes it a little different setup. Like here, we were allowed to be in the foyer, and people could come pick up coffee and donuts on their way in or their way out. And you need um, to have it be a separate right. place. I know that she's going to have that concern, and so you know. So I don't know what the logistics are, and yeah. are we, as a group, willing to do that? I know the PTO has decided that they are not going to be selling baked goods or donuts and coffee. They're going to try and sell some of the goods that they have relating to Wallaceford already in their inventory, like ornaments and shirts and stuff like that. I think we should try, but it's going to depend on our availability to know. I know for a fact I can't. There's no way I can get out of work that day to do that. Um, but if somebody else wants to volunteer, then we can do it. Yeah. I think we should. Can we? Hmm? I'm not. I'm not available. Lord Collins, there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would go up and real well. So that all the resident parents. Yeah. Well, that's it. I didn't get here. So, um, yeah, I, I don't have a full day of my schedule. Well, maybe it's not viable you know, for us this yeah. year, or maybe we just. Um, I can only be there for parts of the day. Um, David? So maybe you want to hang a donation jar around your neck? <laughs> Run out to a table over this one. Donuts <laughs> right here. So maybe, we, don't can we get a donation jar there? Maybe we put a donation jar there if Kate okays it with a box of donuts. Okay, so we can um, get a table there. Yeah, I'll have Kate respond. I think more than going to donate a box of donuts, but I can't do that. What time do polls open? Seven, 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 seven to seven p.m. And I can't be there in the evening, so what somebody wants to come sit there for the last. Do you make thing? sure you come and vote, though? Yes. I will be there with my kids. I, get, I have time to vote. I just don't have time. Yeah, it's a different thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a longer experience with everything being on the ballot. Oh, yeah. So if we move on to the next thing, yes, we, you can sell them for a low oh, cost. <laughs> I forgot about that, actually. So we have an abundance of the, um, the Camp Raleigh public keys that we sold. The, the gray year. ones? Is that the gray ones? Yeah, the vintage ones, the really nice ones that... Um, uh, Kristen had made up for us. Mm -hmm. So we do have a good size inventory of them. And so since we can't, we're not getting rid of them at full price, I wanted to ask if it was okay if we cut the cost a little bit and try and sell them that way. What were we selling them for them for? A buck? It was 12 time? each, two for 20. I mean, because at this point, we've had them for almost three years now, so maybe just um, cut them. Right, yeah. but you know what? I don't, have we really like I I kind of already forgot about them. Like I'm wondering if at some point we should try to put that back on social media. Like anybody looking for? I don't mind. See you every day. I know. But, <laughs> last year, um, awesome. so last year we did it a couple of times. Did we? Um, we didn't have anybody buying. And then every you know when Stanley and I would sit at the tables, um, we'd have the t-shirts on. And there was no no huh. takers. So, which led me to think maybe we should think about um, no. discount. Discounting them. How many? Do, how do we have? How many do we have left? No, I didn't even ask that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> roughly, was, just tell me roughly. I think it was twenty. <laughs> so not many. Well, I happen to not have that uh, information. Oh, I think I left it. I left it in the bag at home with all the other ones. But what? it's a good size bag. If I had to guess, we've got maybe twenty to twenty-five. We do have to put the and they're all, all sizes. Right? Yeah, Celia has them in, in that one. But we do have quite a bit. So. What do you guys think? We bought them at seven dollars each. Yeah, we take a little over half. <laughs> 
we used to make our money back somehow. Right. Yeah. Okay. Two, they were getting it for ten. Right. Yeah. Nobody's gonna remember that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> See, my response would be, "Why would anyone even want one?" <laughs> I have no interest whatsoever. Really? They're so they're nice. nice. They were not, you know, at nice first they were a really cool. nice T-shirt. Yeah. They were like really super comfy. But yeah, yeah. they're probably Lori. I wear mine proudly. T-shirts. They're gonna end up in the right end bin. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Maybe I'll we'll take another picture of them. Maybe we should just repost it. Okay, I'll we'll post, post it on it my one more time. Yes, yeah. the same price. Yeah, yeah. ten bucks. Okay. Yeah. Going I'll once, do ten bucks. Twice. See, if it's at Rollins Park, then I might buy it. But Camp Rollins, never. You get those at Rain. Glory. And you know how often I would wear it? I wear mine all the time. Me too. They're comfy. I'm so you, they're this has shirts. to be a little money because yes. we're so selling we something. So I would suggest but that we make a motion so that we have a clear plan of what we're going to mm. or doing. Do we have to even though we're not changing the price? We're keeping it the same? Well, I would say that we have a clear action plan that needs to be documented <laughs> as a consensus. Okay. She's going to hear you in her head all the time. <laughs> oh, it's coming out of another group too. Okay, yeah. let's do that then. So, I will make a motion. Uh, that first th that they get reposted right. to social media, and then if they don't sell, um, to repost T-shirts. So are you gonna post them for online? Um, the same as we did last year. It was twelve dollars a piece okay. at same okay. price for. You didn't sell any last year? Four uh, weeks? No. Ten items. Did you advertise it last year? I did. I don't remember <laughs> seeing it as an advertise. Can we hang them here in the town? town uh, you can put one on the bulletin board and say $12. You would have a clerk for available sizes talk to Kate before you ask her to do that. <laughs> but she potentially would, you know. I really, okay. like, I really think she potentially, I don't want to throw her under the bus there, but that could be workable. Okay. I so. think it's so good. Yeah, I mean, so, so a motion by Celia to repost t-shirts online at the same price. And town hall. Town hall yeah. with okay from the town clerk. Yeah. Okay. And approval. All right, I will do that. Um, For two weeks, should be for, I'd say for three weeks, and then we will be for three weeks. But just be aware that mm -hmm. um, Kate might have a caveat about all of this, which is election prep and election cleanup, mm -hmm. but it's just bad timing, yeah. and that she would be willing to do it, but not for another three or four weeks, or, you know. Right. I don't want to speak for her, but just be aware that this is a busy time for her. Well, I will talk to her. Um, I'll talk to her next week then, maybe after the dust settles, maybe towards the end of the week. But in the meantime, I'll repost on social media and see if we can have an engagement on that. So and then I've got to get the new flyer. So, so the motion, I'm making a motion to repost t-shirt sales online at the same price and in town hall with approval from the town clerk for three weeks um, from the start of sale. My question about fundraising and scholarship, mostly directed towards Caroline. <laughs> um, I'm so glad you're here. If we have a donation 
like we've gotten in the past, say from C and J, fifteen hundred dollars, and our invoice comes in at less than that. What happens to say the invoice comes in at twelve hundred from the printer? What happens to the other three hundred dollars? Is that still designated funds that have to be held somewhere, or is it going back into the? What is the premise under which they are donating funds? Like, always be aware of what do people think they're donating for. Mm -hmm. I'm donating money for T-shirts. T-shirts, and then you're holding on to the rest of that money until you need T-shirts again, or buy extra T-shirts. Um, if it's for programming, use it only for programming. If it's for recreation, then it then use it for anything that you need to use it for. Whatever is not used, keep track of what the intended purpose of the money is for, because you still have to honor that. Now, to your question, though, you know. Regardless of what specifically they're donating for, they're clearly donating to REC in some form. It may be a more specific purpose, but at the very least, they're donating to REC. So that has to be honored, um, and we have to keep track of that. And I really hope that we're going to work on a fund, because it's really messy to be dealing with that outside of a fund. And so for that reason, I would say, please try to spend all of the donation money and not solicit more than you think you're going to be used, using, just so that we don't have to, we're not knowingly you know, having to carry over funds. That being said, it's absolutely part of what we would hope to calculate into what we would potentially be putting into a fund when we propose to create a fund a year from now. So um, keep track of intents. Try to use all the funds and keep the funds targeted to intents. You're really not supposed to, and yet you have to. And that's why it's messy. Okay. <laughs> so it's an audit level function that um, you know you have to do because you have to honor that intent, but yet really you're not supposed to because money should live in the year in which it happens, which means it goes in the general fund and just becomes part of general monies. But yet you can't do that because it's a donation with a purpose and you always have to honor that. So that's why we really need to work on some kind of fund so that there's a way to just sort of put that money aside and you still have to keep track of intent because if somebody is being very specific with the intent that it would only be used for t-shirts or you know, play equipment or, or whatever the thing is. You know, even if you put that in a separate fund, you'd have to keep track of and honor those intents. But at least um, it kind of gets rid of the audit level messiness of the fact that um, money should sort of expire and lapse into the general fund at the end of the year. And I had found an article that I had referenced in that email that I wrote to Caroline asking for clarification that said, like, if a company comes through and says, we're giving you $2,500 just for soccer uniforms, that money is held by the trustees of the trust fund. It's accepted by the select board because as a committee, we're not the, the body that can accept it. Only the select board can accept. Which is why you have to go to them to apply for grants because they're the ones who accept grants and only they can do those things. So it's the same kind of function, yes. And so it the money would go then go from the select board into a, the, the tr from what I understand, the trustees of the trust fund would hold it until an invoice from the vendor that made the soccer uniforms comes before the select board, they would sign it, and the trustees of the trust fund would pay out that money to supply that invoice. That's the way I understand the article. That's, all, that's all weeds, but the point is, you know, I wouldn't worry about that level of stuff just, just know that you've got to keep track of your intents, and we need to start working on, you know, not now. Now you need to work on getting camp going. But um, don't disappear for six weeks after the end of camp. We've got to get working right away on the following year's budget because the budget process needs to start a lot sooner because of SB2. We got in a pickle with not starting soon enough this, this year. Um, but also in creating, you know, this fund, what kind of fund, and, and what is the intent of the fund, 
as soon as possible after Rex so that we have all those ducks in a row. But just because there's the chance that that wouldn't pass, in order to avoid the messiness, it's just um, cleaner to try to fully expend whatever money you're going to bring into the donation. Yeah, my other question is, is, and it's, I guess, for all of us, but the scholarship funds that we have, um, could they go to offset field trip costs? Say a kid can just barely afford to pay for camp. Can they? Can we ask somebody for scholarship funds to offset the additional cost of field trip? I think you really need a scholarship policy about what level. What are the income guidelines? Who's reviewing them? What kind of documentation is required to verify that somebody falls within whatever the income get, guidelines are? And then what activities or what expenses? qualify to be offset by those monies. So that you're being consistent and you're not, you, it's not ever perceived that you're helping the families you know or feel bad for. I know they have a problem, so let's help them without fully evaluating everybody equally that might come for you. So who, who did that last year? Who um, reviewed, uh, who was given Denise something? and I. Okay. But without this policy, which I think is really important, if so, you know, if we could find such a policy from Barrington or somewhere else, you know, what do other towns do for children who need assistance? Um, we, as a group, had voted on recommendations that needed to go, I guess, to the next step, whatever it may be, to form a policy. We had said a couple of years ago, this is what we recommend the threshold should be for scholarships. It would be good to review that, but also review that in the context of a policy that another community has adopted so that we are aware of all the things that we're not thinking of. Because all I can say is, you know, I, I'm sure we're not thinking about everything. Yeah. Um, and, and so, sort of apply those guidelines to whatever kind of policy, see if we can get them adopted, but at least informally, they'll be, you know considered guidelines or something, but just something so that you can say that you are evaluating everybody evenly and consistently. Did we have enough scholarships last year? Or we had an extra one, and I had to go back to the vendor who donated it and said, at this point, we cannot carry this over into the next year. Can we use this for something else? And one vendor said that they were willing to let us use it for whatever was necessary. And so it went into programming versus scholarships. Um, so let me just interrupt for a second. Diane just said, um, go ahead and get one to me as soon as you can. We are going to have a meeting after the play to reflect on um, stuff and discuss grants and the spring fundraiser. I'll email you the form. And I said, well, I'm not going to email is there a dead to date or a suggested amount. And she said, it can't exceed $1,000. We were accepting grants until the end of February. But I have not heard that any came in. And I said, oh, no, we missed it last year, too. She said, I say go for it. We have talked that it needs to be in Raleigh, um, Rollinsford Town newsletter, I guess, the deadline date or something. So, um, so I guess we missed it. But she's saying go ahead and apply. <laughs> Months, so for not is four hundred and five, you know, nine. Well, but that's also a camp program. Right. right. So
so right. they catch on to uh, yeah. Yeah. True. I might charge more. Yeah. True. Such a bummer. So maybe that's a thought. So we use the REF. Didn't we used to do doodle bugs before? That was really good. So yes. I will revisit it sometime. Maybe I'll come in and talk to Caroline and put questions on the line. Because I don't need to have everybody here. Okay. All right, I think we need to set the next meeting. If you uh, do you have it for the nineteenth, I thought. That's what we had it on. Well, that's what I had on the list. Or we got to keep that? I just that didn't know if we were, we were going to abide by that because we never really did discuss it. So, we'll see. I'm traveling on the 19th, so I'm, I'm out. This is work related. <laughs> say that you do or you don't. Um, I think we can close by consensus. The only caveat to that is 
if somebody really has something that they want to say and you're just going to close the meeting. And for that reason, you can make a motion and, you know. I'm closing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's why I think you typically I second here. <laughs> you know, a motion to close, like, you know, an action to close rather than just closing. Mm. But opening, you don't have that same kind of problem. Okay. So you should say I have a motion. A motion to close. All right, so Celia, am I sending you this grant um, 818? 